Hello, I'm Curran, and this video is all about creating a starting point in code for responsive data visualizations and graphics using D3. But first of all, why would you want to do this? Let's take a look at an example line chart in DataViz Tech. The idea behind this platform is that any visualization may be embedded into other pages or viewed in full screen mode. So knowing the size of the page and responding to resize should be sort of the core element of all visualizations in DataViz Tech. Blocks.org is an amazing resource for visualization examples made with D3. But many of the examples in Blocks.org, like this canonical bar chart example, suffer from this issue that they have a fixed width and height. Also, many examples on Blocks.org don't use the general update pattern. They just are designed to render only once. And so it takes some modification of the code to get them to respond to resize. The effect of this is that if you, say, open this example in full screen mode, it doesn't take advantage of the full width and height. So how can we approach this to make it possible to create responsive visualizations and graphics? What I'd like to do next is walk through writing the code for a starting point for responsive graphics. The idea is that this can be the starting point for many future visualizations in this platform. Next, I'm going to click on Create Visualization. And I'll call it Responsive Starter Code. Then I'll click on Create. Now I'll give it a description and say this example is intended to be a jumping off point for creating your own responsive visualizations. When you create a visualization in DataViz Tech, at least right now, it gives you this boilerplate starter code. And this is the code that we are going to write right now. So what I'll do is delete this and start from scratch so that when you see this code, you know exactly what's going on. I'm going to pop over to JSBin and grab their HTML boilerplate because I think it's a nice, concise starting point for any HTML document. Then I'll change the title. The first thing we need to know is the size of the page. I'll make a script tag and then inside that I'll say console.log document.body.clientwidth. To see what gets output, I'm going to open the Chrome Developer Tools. There's some old errors there, so I'm going to clear the console and then make a small change to rerun this code and see what gets output. So we see this number, 701, appear. All right, so far so good. Now we know our width of our page here. Next, let's uh, get the height. We can say console.log document.body.client height. But see what gets output here. We get zero. If we want to get the real height of the page, we need to use some uh, sort of tricks, some CSS related tricks. I'll set up some CSS in a style tag and I'll say the body has position fixed and left right, top, and bottom, all zero pixels. Check it out, now we get this number, 482. All right, we got something for the height, but I know that's not quite right because this iframe here is uh, 500 pixels tall. So we need one more piece, and that is to give it a margin of zero pixels. Now we get the number 498 which is 500 minus the uh, border on this iframe. This is the accurate number of pixels we have to work with. Now that we know our width and height, let's use D3 to put an SVG element in here and make it fill the screen. I'm going to use this great CDN unpackage.com slash D3. And when I navigate to this page, it will navigate to the currently 
released version of D3, which happens to be 5.0.0. So I'll copy that URL and use it as the source value for a script tag in our page. I'm going to make a function called myResponsiveComponent, taking arguments container and props. This is a pattern that I found works pretty well and scales pretty well for visualization components. It's a lot like React components, in particular the uh, pure functional React components, but this is the concept, that you pass in a container, which is a D3 selection of a DOM element that you want to put stuff into, and then an object called props, which contains a bunch of different property values. We can invoke this function and pass as the first argument d3.select body because we're going to put an SVG element into the body. And the second argument will be an empty object for now. Next, we can pass in width and height as props, and these are derived from document.body.client width and client height. Then we can say const svg equals container.append svg. This will append an svg element to, in this case, the body. Next, we can set the width attribute to props.width and the height attribute to props.height. And I'll clean up the formatting a little bit. So what do we have now? Just an SVG that's the right size, but we can't see anything because there's nothing in the SVG. So I got this idea. Well, let's make a rectangle inside the SVG and make it some color uh, and maybe give it rounded corners so we can see where it is and, you know, its width and height clearly. So we can say const rect rectangle equals svg.append rect and then set the width and height just like we're doing with the SVG. And boom! We get a black rectangle filling our screen here. Next I'll say dot ATTR RX is 10 or 100 say so that now we can see the extent of our rectangle and we can confirm that indeed it's filling up the available space on the screen. All right, we've got this rectangle that's the right size and all, but what if we were to resize the page? See, if I uh, resize the page here, the width of the rectangle does not update. I'm gonna rearrange my environment a little bit here and have the visualization open to the view page on the right while I edit the code on the left. So what's our strategy here? What are we going to do next? Here's what I propose. We listen for changes in the size of the page and then have an event listener where in that event listener we re-render our component, our responsive component, using the updated width and height. Next I'll say window.addEventListener resize and then pass a callback function where we can just say console.log resized to check if it worked. Now if we resize the browser, you can see that in the console it gets printed out resized every time a resize happens. Alright, now we need to make sure to invoke our MyResponsiveComponent once on page load and also every time a resize happens and pass in the updated width and height. So I'll create a function called render and then invoke our component inside of that function. Next we invoke that render function once when the page loads and also we can pass it as the callback to the resize event so that it re-renders every time the page resizes. Now if we resize the page, what happens? It looks like it's not quite working as we expect. So let's inspect the DOM and see what's going on here. See this? We're appending more and more SVGs to the page. 
This is because in the code, we're just saying container.append SVG. So every time we invoke this function, every time the page resizes, we're appending more and more SVG elements, and to each new SVG element, we're appending a new rect element. This is not right. This is not what we want to be happening. We want to just have a single SVG element with a single rect element, no matter if it's the first invocation or a subsequent invocation. And for this, we need to use the general update pattern. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this chunk of code here to use the general update pattern and to use a special case of the general update pattern for managing a single element, namely this one SVG element. So we can say const SVG equals container dot select all SVG dot data and pass in an array that just contains a single element and that element can be null. Then we can say svg.enter.append svg, which will append a new svg element only on the first invocation of this function. And then we can say dot merge svg, which is the update selection. And then we set the width and height attributes on the merged enter and update selection on our svg. Since we refer to this SVG variable later on, we really should reassign it to be the merged enter and update selection, because right now it's just the update selection. So first I'll change const to let, so we can reassign this, and then I'll reassign SVG to be the merged enter and update selection, so we can append our rectangle to it later on, and be sure that this SVG variable refers to our single, one and only SVG element, no matter if it's the first invocation or a subsequent invocation. All right, so what happens now if we resize this page? It looks like we've got expanded rectangles, but what have we got inside of our DOM? See, we have multiple rectangles now, but on the outside, we just have a single SVG. So we need to apply the same pattern to our rectangles. So we can create our data join by saying const rect equals svg.selectAllRect.data an array with a single element, null. Then we can say rect.enter.appendRect and then set our attributes on the merged enter and update selection. And actually, since the Rx attribute is constant and does not depend on props, we can set that in the enter selection. So now let's see what happens when we resize the page and then inspect the DOM. All right, we've got a single SVG element on the outside and a single rectangle on the inside. And then as we resize, these single you know, elements get updated, which is exactly what we want. All right, so this is how you can create a responsive component and make it respond to resize. But there's just one last thing. I don't like to see props dot everywhere, so I want to do a minor refactoring. I'm going to remove all of these props dot from the code, and then up at the top of the function, I'm going to say const width comma height equals props to unpack these from the props object up front. If you want to use this as a starting point, you can navigate to this page, which I've linked from the video, and then click on fork. This will make a copy of this so that you can make your own changes and uh, make it more complex and make whatever you want to make. All right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.